think the new sort of I don't know like the new interpretation of what like you know punk or band music or whatever it is mm. it's like it's everything's melted together and mm. everything's modernized and it's the fresh version it's, it's become, the renaissance mm, do you know what I mean that's what about, it is like do you know what I mean it's become less about like right, being like grime's got to be yeah. beat driven and and punk's got to be fresh in the guitar it's it's more just an attitude now isn't it killer killer KillerKellerOfficial.com You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, here we go. Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, or central as you need to be. Big shout out to everybody who's got television app. GraffitiKings.com, we salute all day, every day. Um, not to mention all the regulars, sharing is caring. Without you, we don't make, we don't make moves. We, we're trying to make signature moves out here. This is like the WWF <laughs> of signature moves. We're doing it. Um, yeah, central as you need to be. Inside the place, we do have two gentlemen from a, from a collective that I can only describe as this... Uh, uh, London hybrid of punk meets rap meets grime and you know this this is an age old fable of where uh, musical balls gets to transition over some of the more hardcore um, adoptees and genres well yeah these guys are doing it right now and uh, I've been a fan for a minute big shout out here's Ben and Jack <laughs> Kid yeah. Capiche. Nice to meet you all. Nice yeah. to meet you all. Nice to see you. Hello, How sir. Pleasure to be here. Cheers, 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 cheers. And thanks for coming down. Oh, mate, mate thanks for having us. Absolute pleasure to be here. Absolutely love it when people take a trip in. Drop yeah, in. no, it was nice and easy. Got the old Clio going. Came yeah. up here and uh, found a nice little parking space. It was stepping all good. In, stepping into the HQ, man. Yeah, <laughs> Hold that. yeah come on. Inside HQ. the orbital, always. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's right. The nerve centre. That's just, see, this is what I like. And you guys ain't, uh, ain't too far uh, away from the podcast well you said you've done some before so you know the yeah train. well we did it we did a thing called the lockdown lowdown during um covid part one maybe we did a bit in covid <laughs> part, part two i can't remember yeah, that's it. yeah that was a lot of fun we were just saying like ended up uh getting a few like of our mates on there um we had like joel from wolf alice come on there oh we, we had joel so joel from wolf alice the drummer he lives in hastings and he's a friend of ours and um we got him on it and, and we did this um this whole game. This this whole game show that, this, that we thought was hilarious. Like the, the reason we did the podcast was we were like, let's make funny jingles. Let's do that. <laughs> so we spent a lot of time just making funny jingles. Hey, you want funny jingles? I'm your fucking guy. Yeah, yeah. oh man, it's all about the jingles. The podcast <laughs> was just, a, just, an, it was an, just excuse, an excuse for the jingle. <laughs> um, but we made this game show of him and it was like porn star or racehorse where we would say a name and you had to guess whether it was the name of a racehorse oh or a porn star. Oh my God, that is amazing. Yeah, and we did the whole thing. Where have you boys come from? Where have you not been <laughs> in my life sooner? That's fucking wicked. It was, oh, we thought so too and then... And then um, About like, an hour afterwards he called Joel Remy like, was like, do you know what, man? I don't think we can put that out and I was... I forget, <laughs> I forget that they probably have a very different demographic of yeah, fans than it, like man. what... Than so what that I'm, game's in the locker now. That game's in the locker waiting for... Yeah, yeah that's patented right already. Time. Get in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys have like one hell of a cult following. Like, for those of you that ain't aware of Kid Capici right now, I mean, we're we're really dealing with like avid followers below the radar in a way, which which always makes for the better side of mm -hmm. punk. But but you know, there's a real energy and an essence to this where you know if you if you really start collecting the the valuables like limited edition yeah. this you know one off extra bonus track Absolutely. that you guys kind of come under that category yeah we love that yeah you know i mean we love that stuff like um we've been super lucky with our with our fans like they're so Dedicated, you, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like, yeah. They say you're, you're better off having like a few really good friends than lots of like you know acquaintances. acquaintances. And um, I think like our fan base is just like they're so loyal. We actually inherited a lot of them off of Frank Carter, um, Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes, and from the Gallows. And he um, he discovered us, took us on tour with him around Europe. That was kind of like our first big up Frank. Yeah, yeah big up Frank, man. Thank 100%. you for everything as always. Um, but he kind of started us off. Um, took us from basically nobody knowing who we were to a few people knowing who we are. 
And mm. um, but they had such a loyal fan base. And Frank's one of them guys that he he like makes such amazing artwork. He's really involved with all the art. He does a lot of like you mm, know tattoo tattooing work. and Ooh. stuff. Yeah, 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 so yeah. his fans are like super receptive to that. And that meant that we could start doing that. And we work with like loads of local artists in Hastings. We do a lot of stuff ourselves. But there's just so much like talent in Hastings that you kind of like don't even need to leave that little area to to record a record, produce a record, make the artwork. Do you know what I mean? And like all of that. It's nice but, to do it all ooh, in your community. Yeah. You know what I mean? And God, feel like I love that. Bit, like, yeah, 100%, wicked. 100%. Yeah, I feel that. And it's they've always been like, that's given us the opportunity to make all those little one-off things. Like we love doing that. And yeah. it was cool. Like, I think like, having like stayed inside our, our town for a long time and like kind of built up a rep there and, and done a lot of touring and stuff like that. But end of last year, we did this Scarlet gig and we turned out and that sold out. And that for us was a moment of like, oh, wait, shit. there's people out there that like want to come and see us. And you know, Scarlet, like, that's like an 850 cap, isn't it? Yeah, yeah like, we, and we sold that out, like trying to sell that during a pandemic, you know, wow. like that. So that was booked and we were meant to be, I think we did Moth Club or something like this was, you got to remember, it was like three years ago now mm. because of everything that happened. Times are changing. I know. <laughs> and, and we did Moth Club, sold that out. That was like 350. And then we were meant to be doing Scarlet six months later. Um, and then it got postponed, 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 trying to sell tickets during a pandemic. And then as soon as it was like, right, this is happening, sold it out. Um, yeah, that was insane, like, to be able to do that. So that, going back to what we're saying, was like the first time that we were like, okay, it's not just a Hastings mm. thing. It was like a... Something else is happening here. London yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. But, but here's the thing, um, localised. I think, uh, you know, I'm just throwing a few names out there just to give people an understanding of, of the kind of... the, the, the the uh, areas in which you guys, I believe, you float quite heavily in. Mm. And it's quite broad. But when you look at the locality of these people and how much it is all about the the, the institutions they create, the, the community and the scene, I'm thinking, like, the Goldborns, Skinner Brothers, uh, Nova Twins, mm -hmm. Bob Villain, um, Slaves, um, Wonk Unit, yeah, you know absolutely. what I mean? Yeah. Like, these guys. Mm -hmm. And then and it does cross over into more kind of more grimier stuff, mm -hmm. you know, in the American stuff, Death Grips and Horrors. And you guys, you... Kid Capici, it does kind of embody a, a, a working class uh, community push, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. Like, that? it's totally couldn't really have hit the nail on the head more. As what that's what I want people to think, you yeah. know, and that's what I feel like. Um, but no, Hastings is it's it's like it's one of the most deprived towns in the in the UK. In fact, in the top twenty most deprived towns, it, it sits right in the middle of that. It's the only town south of. Uh, like the southern like crossover south of London that is one in there's 19 towns in M20 that are all northern towns and the only southern town is Hastings it's a really deprived town it's got a lot of issues it's also got a Tory government that's still been there for the last like 15 years or something like that not budging and you know the, all the issues that have been there are, are, are not being solved so when you when you kids like us growing up well, there's not really much to do in the first place. And the second, what everyone does is just you do music. Mm. You don't do it because there's just nothing else to do. And it's a way of expressing yourself. Like, And that's probably the common factor with all of those bands you're talking about. Um, and it's it's like, it's real to us because it is real. And, you know, we're not, we're not writing songs or singing songs about what we think people want to hear hmm. or what we think people might be feeling. This is stuff that we feel. This is stuff we experience. This is stuff our family are going through, stuff our friends are going through. Hmm. So it makes our job super easy in that respect because you're speaking from the heart and you're speaking about something you actually really care about, um, which I think is a common fact with all of those bands that you've just mentioned, probably, mm. I would so, say. Yeah, and to jump on the Killer Killer playlist when you get a chance because there is a tune that, that I, I bumped number of times just for relativity's sake and sardines and i think that tune of yours really does resonate yeah. with what you're talking about here yeah it's, it's some of the and anagram is a bunch then let's let's be honest nah, but that's one sardines one. definitely is one that like it yeah. not only came quite easily when you're writing it but it's yeah. one that connects like often yeah we didn't quite expect, easily with people yeah. we know, didn't like, expect much to come from that song so we thought it was like we were like is this a bit silly but it's true man like and and on the on the second album which we're uh just finished as well we're we have, there's a lot more of that. Like you know, we were like, are we doing enough of this? Are we not doing enough? Like, and I, but it definitely listening back now, <laughs> it's like the first album super angry, um, and the second one which no one's heard yet, other than New England, 
Um, I'll tie that New England shoes. Big shout out Bob Villain. Yes, to Bob Villain, man. Yeah, Bob, Bob Villain's an absolute legend, man. Like, yeah, man. Um, I'm so glad he... Uh, when me and he Ben wrote, for it. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. when me and, me and Ben wrote that song, that was like one of the first songs we wrote off of that album, um, and we were like, okay, this is a new direction, but felt like a really good one that we wanted to explore, mm. um, and we straight away were like Bob Villain, we've yeah, got man. to get Bob Villain on this, and we asked him, and he just straight away was like, love it's it. It's all of his core principles. Mm. Welcome to one. It was wicked. Yeah. We we couldn't to pick someone that you really want to work with and. You know, you expect to maybe go through like three or four options before someone's like, all right, I'll do it. But he was just, and he's blown up as well, doing massive stuff. Like, yeah, he's incredible. And he sent that 32, and it was just instantly like, mate, amazing. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just not, like, not a single note. Please, thank you. Know you. I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah like, exactly. I was worried, you know, someone's sending something, and you don't want to, he's a lyricist. I'm not going to, so I don't want right, to be like, whatever, oh, I don't know about this. But he literally, every single, mm. what you hear on that track is mm. what he sent. I and mean, it was just like, I loved amazing. it so much. Do you, man. About, the, do you think about, Bob Villains, like, because I quizzed him on a couple of his tunes where he's gone proper to the, to the bank with with the grind bars. Yeah, and they go, yeah, but you don't understand. I spend the whole of a project writing them. I'm not like a skeptor. I'm mm-hmm. not like a um, a gets. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm gonna be really brutally honest. I think he's better than that. <laughs> he's than sick, him. man. That song he did, that GDP song as well that yeah. recently came out, I was just like, he's just, like I said, he's been absolutely blown up, but he's in that exact crossover of like, is it punk? Is it grime? Like, mm. do you know what I mean? He's supporting the offspring, but then he's also like doing all these other gigs and like putting out the music he puts out. I love mm. that crossover so mm. much. It's, I think the new, sort of, I don't know, like the new interpretation of what like, you know, punk or band music or whatever it is, mm. it's like it's everything's melted together and mm. everything's, Modernized and it's the fresh version. It's, it's become, the Renaissance. Do you know it's what I mean? It's become like, you know it's become mean? less about like right being like grime's but, got to yeah. be beat driven and and punk's got to be fresh in the guitar. It's it's more just an attitude now, isn't it? Yeah. It's it's more like you know, multi-genre kind of. New England doesn't like, have a single mm. guitar in it, really, does yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. But it, but still, it's it's a punk song and it's mm. you know that's what I like. It's it feels like more of a. Uh, an attitude than anything you know speaking out and like we always say in these like rough times that's when like that music flourishes so mm. god knows what's going to happen when things get better the music's we don't, what we're going to write about <laughs> <laughs> but on the, on the this time next year album what mm. was the name of the tune talking about you know hip, hipster girls with a uh, you know sell diamonds i forget the name of the tune um, buy diamonds sell diamonds what's the name of the tune you know the one it's got oh new, yeah glitterati glitterati yeah man. right so it's got a wicked kind of moog synth thing mm-hmm. going going yeah. across it yeah, yeah, yeah. and i found that like really like quite um it felt like a, sometimes you get like those punk bands that have a saxophonist play yeah, yeah. and you're like yo that sax sounds wicked on my <laughs> yeah but that's happened to me i was listening to it i was yeah, like yeah. yo that sounds sick with that yeah. is that just, is, do you choose not to use um conventional you know instruments like you know the guitar like for, for your punk songs i think we've always tried to like <clears throat> to a certain degree like probably about halfway through writing the first album and certainly moving into the second one like tried to approach it from a hybridised place, you know mm. what I mean? Because, like, we love so many different types of music and you don't necessarily want to, like, put sort of a cage around yourself in terms of how you can approach, like, mm. the, the productions and stuff. So I think we have always had it in our minds, even if it was taking guitars and being like, oh, how can that sound yeah. a bit more weird? Or we'd never been afraid to be like, oh, these keyboards, these synths, mm. whatever. The, because it's like, if it serves the song, it serves the song. Well, the, the, the second I mean, album in particular is, like, it moves even more away from, like, even more to what you're saying, where it was like, let's try and use this, let's try and do that instead. And it's definitely, the second one's felt like much more of a hybrid. Um, but... I think with the first one, it was like we were trying to be like, how do we rein it in so that we can play this live, mm. you know? And with the second one, we've just we've been able to work with uh, Dom from Nothing But Thieves, and he big up Dom. Well tight. And he Thieves. he's kind of like has much more of an attitude of let's make the song sound as good as possible and produce it how we want, and then work out how to do it live mm. afterwards. Which is something you want to do, but sometimes uh, the key factor with not being possible is money. <laughs> but we, oh yeah, I heard about that thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fucking thing. We, we like um, we spent a bit of time away with him the other week in Essex, and um, and just like you're you're the gear man, you know how it all works. But like we now are in a position where we can just make a song sound how we want to sound and. If there's no guitars in it, there's no guitars in it, and uh... we've gone to upgrade it, and it's like I'd say like with the music we've cast 
we can now cast a really wide net on what we can write and the way it sounds. Yeah. But mm. now live, we can really like really? do whatever right, we let's want. Do some really exciting stuff here, and let's make the show sound like insane. Yeah. Really, yeah. So, so if you really like exciting. that in glitterati and stuff, yeah. there's much more, much higher level of that to come. I think. Sick. Yeah, I'm a fan, man. And I think one of the questions I think like I've been meaning to ask is. Why Kid Capici? Like, as how many is it? Four of you? Four of us. So how how come the kid? Yeah, Who's well, the I individual? didn't. Well, none none of us. That's the thing. Like, um, do you know it was weird? Like, um, before I'd go into what the name was actually about, I never thought that until recently. And basically, we had this mental thing with um, we put up a song called Party at Number Ten, which was just like this little acoustic number we wrote, which was taking a piss. And it was like the chorus, like, don't get excited, you're not invited to the party at number 10. Because uh, it's one rule for you and another for them. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Oi! But... Yo, lyrics. <laughs> yeah. We, we were yeah. like, shut, shut, shut. <laughs> <laughs> we put that up on um, Twitter, which we don't really use Twitter that much. So we're more Instagram babies. And then um, we put that up and Liam Gallagher, of all people, replied to it, going, great tune, our kid. And I was like, what the fuck, sort of thing. And then, um, and then basically we heard him on the radio... Um, talking about us, being like, I love this new band, um, Kid Capici. I think he's a guy from Hastings. He's this, he's that. And I was like, okay, maybe people think Kid Capici is a one-man thing. I never realised that. Well, what does um, Capici mean? Doesn't mean anything. So <laughs> 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 this is like, I always feel like this is such a letdown to everyone when they hear this. Like, um, we, when we were recording ages ago, like when we were kiddies sort of thing, like we were... Uh, we, we didn't have a name for the band and we were just like, what are we going to call it? And then we were recording in like this little tiny studio and there was just this one bar on repeat and they were just doing something to the vocal and it was just going, kick a peach, kick a peach, kick a peach, kick a peach. Sounded like it. Like that. At the end of a line and the beginning of the next. So one. we were just like, let's go with that. Because every name we tried to think of before, because we were like young and couldn't have come up with any good names, we're like, everyone already had them names. We were like, oh, what about this? And I already exists. So we were like, well, nobody is yeah, going to ever be called that. that. So there's always somebody with something. Can exactly. It? And we were like, well, no mm. one will ever be called that. But also have learned the hard way that no one will ever be able to pronounce it or spell yeah, it. That's so. it. No matter how big you get, <laughs> everyone's nailed it, on though. Capacci. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Also, after the big up at the beginning, I was thinking, it's going to be Capacci. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be Capacci. Comes. So yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that's a more interesting or less interesting story, but that's how it came about. Just like a random... From the universe. Yeah, from the Gave universe. Gave it to us, man. It's just psychological repeating in a studio in a room mm. you will like this you will like <laughs> you know what I've, ne- I've, yeah, yeah. I've never liked the name I've always been like I hate that name Ooh. so much but loads of people are like it's sick I think the good thing about it is it like it doesn't put any it doesn't lean on anything before you it could be anything we could be a jazz band we could be a punk band I think you're be... right there and the cool thing is you kind of just yeah. it, it doesn't taint your expectation before you the hear music, it. Yeah. It could be anything. So yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I like about it, but I also feel it's a bit weird. No, but like no, it. but I, I, listen, Killer Keller. Do you know what no, I mean? No, that's sick. That's sick. <laughs> Talk about taint. No, but I'm, I, I'm kind of here now there with it. Yeah. I always was. I was it, like, me, mm, because of the killer part. I mean, mm. I'm not far from it. And, it, and like you say, it gives you a, it creates that kind of precursor to what Taste you think it's going to be. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, he's going to be a rapper. Yeah. <laughs> oh, immediately. So yeah, Kika Peachy is a, yeah. That was a random one from the stars. Hmm. Yeah, Mummy, the punk band Mummy, you know them guys. Yeah, yeah, fucking, yeah, yeah. well, I'm not sure if they're still about anymore, but they've been on the podcast. And uh, try Googling that shit. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> do you know what I mean? You end up in trouble. Yeah. I'd rather it be a one thing, do you know what I mean? That it's the only thing on Google yeah, when you search it. it, and it mm. might be a bit left, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that's it, like, no, it's, um, it's, 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 I think people are finally getting it. Like, like I said, you nailed it, but when you get like on Radio 1 and stuff, you'll still get people being like Kick Apache and stuff. Liam Gallagher said... Kid Apache, and then he was like, I think it might be Kid Apache, but I think Apache's cooler. And I was like, oh, man, we should change it. <laughs> People have been getting big Capici tattoos, man. And I'm, really? like, I'm just waiting for the misspell on that, man. Oh, Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, me too. Mm, so you really got some avid followers. You got some people that are going to. Tattoo themselves up. Big. Mm, I'm talking really. wrist to elbow with this with like the logo, man. That's because you've got core <laughs> principles. Again, that just is just this highlights the urgency of what punk brings to people. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a real you know, okay, you had like Sham sixty nine and and uh, um, oh God, dare I say like Cockney Rejects, like mm-hmm. bigger, like I, I like Cockney Rejects, but they kind of appeal to a more grittier, hooligan esque, yeah, not even kind of audience, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's still of a class of a time, mm-hmm. and like there, there's no taking the fight out the dog in that. Absolutely. Now, like you said, nowadays there is this real broader sensibility with punk. 
that allows you to I feel like to cross the board of different people. I feel like punk's become the new word, like the indie used to be that word for like 10, 15 years that, you know, mm. kind of was like this big broad thing and it just meant like, you know, DIY bands playing out of their garages mm. and stuff like that. And it kind of didn't mean anything by the end of it. And it kind of feels like punk's had this whole new revival with everything being so tough and everyone being like so down and out, especially in like some of the places that, you know, we've probably all lived and grown up and stuff. Um, it's become just like an all-encompassing word. Well, you think like, the stereotypes gone kind of like of, of what maybe punk ended up being? Yeah, the, I, I the, think the if age. you say to someone, like if I said to my dad or something and he didn't know anything, I was like, yeah, we're a punk band. He's going to imagine we're the Sex Pistols. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Whereas like mm-hmm. it's just become to me more of an attitude, and that attitude still crosses over, but it's a. Uh, it's less, yeah. It's 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 more. It just feels like an all-encompassing thing. Like it's it's punk to just be like anti-establishment, which it always has been. It's punk to kind of just like do it yourself. Mm-hmm. Like indie mm-hmm. was the DIY thing, and now it's like punk's DIY. It yeah. Feels like before that was grunge. Yeah, things like that. It's just another word, but I love it. I love that, and it's kind of just like I think anything that has like a sort of social commentary as well, mm. um, which is obviously something that we that's what we we like to talk about. So. I guess that's why we fall it. Like the music can change entirely, but yeah, I guess that's what music's a bit less tribalized now as well. Like I guess in the past yeah. it was like, are you grunge? Are you hip hop? Are you this? But nowadays, like you know, as things going on, young people are like I don't really feel like I'm just like I like one music or I dress mm-hmm. one way. It's like everything's just kind of like melted together, which I think is just a good thing because everyone dips in each other's pots in yeah. terms of creativity, and I think that's always going to be oh. a good thing. You know, you get you get yeah. innovation. You know. I'll tell you a story. So I go and do, once a month, <coughs> I go and do like a punk rock and roll DJ set just down at Slim Jim's in Upper Street, right? Nice. Yeah, I don't man. know if you guys have played there before. I'm coming, I'm coming to the next one. Yeah, man, it's fire. <laughs> but I swear to God, right, the audience is young. I'm talking mm. like, you know, a few years younger than me, 23, 24. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and they'll come up to me like and go, you know, uh, at worst, you'll be, you've got any Lincoln Park. Mm. But <laughs> they come up to you and they go, and this could be in one sitting. They go, you got any system of a down? Mm. I'm like, yeah. And then they go, got any status quo? Yeah. And then Nazareth. This mad, about, isn't it? And these are all young. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's all new to them as yeah, well. It's all new. It's like all one big thing. It's like, it's like there is no elephant in the room. Like, there's no secret, you know, f- mm-hmm. love of, you know, tunes that may be a little bit cheese on toast. Yeah. But to them, it's just, there's just no yeah. filter. That's it. Yeah, I think like we were saying as well, like there's so many bands coming out now that, we're, that are doing really well that like for us we've looked at them and been like they feel like a carbon copy of like maybe the Arctic Monkeys or the Strokes or Led Zeppelin mm. but it's like so long ago now or Radiohead yeah, and yeah, stuff like that and yeah. you're like but that is new to these kids not to make myself sound older like than I already old am but <laughs> like as in like you know when when I'm listening I'm like that's just the Arctic Monkeys it's like some of these people have never even listened to like Radiohead or the Arctic Monkeys so, so this whole new era of bands coming out it's like you you can't do something uh, like if you wanted to do an Arctic Monkey sing like 10, 15 years ago, you wouldn't be able to get away with close. it. But yeah, now yeah. you can kind of like, it's, it's... It's those cycles though, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Like I was chatting last night with someone about it. It's like, you know, if you grew up in the 90s, 30 years before that, you'd be listening to the, the 70s music. Mm. And then like now that's the 90s that and the becomes, 2000s yeah, yeah, and, it, and whatever. Like Totally. It's a convey about of constant nostalgia, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. We're the future nostalgia. This is the future nostalgia. <laughs> yes. um, I'm right now. Um, and you're right, you know, like, there's a new wave that's happening with bands as a whole. You know, when you when you look at what COVID did, it kind of reset a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And that, and okay, there's still not the budget for the backline. There's still not the labels that are pitching in. But there is something really. There's a level of urgency, mm-hmm. and like you guys will jump in a fucking van and do it because what COVID's created is a, is a mess, is a, mm. is, is a problem and, a, a, and it needs a solution. Absolutely, yeah. yeah Everyone's got gratitude, I think, as well. Like, I think after, like, all that kind of, like, uh, let's just talk about music, like, with gigs and mm. whether you're attending a gig or you're putting one on, I think the fact that got taken away and you realised it wasn't a given, now when we're coming back, it's like, we're grateful to be there, mm. everyone there's mm. grateful to be there and that, there's a mutual sort of, like, yeah. and there love is, there. That's and, cold, I love that. <laughs> And you also feel like, you know, you've had like a, you know, it's kind of like being like a boxer or like a football player or something. You feel like there's, a, whether this is true or not, you feel like you probably have quite a short space of time to do something. Like it's, 
you know, that that isn't how it should be. But, you know, if you want to be in a punk band, you kind of want to be in your 20s, 30s sort of thing, smashing it out. So it's given you a new sense of urgency of being like, we feel like we've just had like three years ripped away from us right when we were at the precipice of doing something. So now it's like... I won't take any like BS when it's like, well, let's wait, let's do this, let's hold on. It's like, no, let's do it now, let's do it now. And that has been our attitude this whole time. Like, smash that first album out. Everyone was like, well, you know, let's let's wait and let's wait for this to blow over and then we can go do it properly. No, let's record it ourselves. Let's do it. Let's put it out. Yeah, I I get the urgency. I think we all follow suit with that. We we run, 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 run. Mm. Um, Although, just to kind of counteract that playing devil's advocate a bit i've realized that there's a whole two three years worth of young people some of them from finished college mm. right on the beginning yeah and never have never been to a club it's mad <laughs> yeah, isn't it exactly, i know that's exactly. insane to them guys you guys are like legacy holders yeah like, it's they're insane. coming into this thing like yo well, we got to see these guys. Yeah. They were they were BC before COVID, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, man, there's a whole BC, backlog. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I like that, man. Kick yeah, that is very BC, true. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, I didn't even really think about that. That is insane, like, do you know what I mean? Like, when I was turning 18, you can't wait to get out and just do whatever you can do, like, mm. so... Some kids going to uni at that time, I remember them being like, finally, we're doing the thing oh, we yeah, yeah. do or whatever, and they're like, suddenly like, nah, it's not happening yeah, now. Yeah. It wasn't like, a good time what? for anyone, was like, it? Yeah, no yeah, matter yeah. what age you were, there was it was still kind of like, oh, Shit man. sandwich. Yeah, exactly. The anything that flourished was graffiti. Graffiti yeah. flourished like a motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, man. I bet. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> Tough. And also BMXs. I had BMXs big in Hastings. It's yeah, the, yeah. Um, we, got you... the, we got the world's biggest underground yeah. like skate park. And Source BMX skate park. Yeah, Source Park, man. It's It's amazing. Didn't they? I, I don't actually know that much about them. Like, um, obviously, I know everyone in Hastings is because I know them through Hastings. But um, the the guys that created it didn't weren't, were they like Hastings locals? And they yeah, just started yeah. with like started with like a small bike shop or something. Started selling stuff online, maybe like I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, and became like the biggest in the UK for. Yeah, it the, used to be one of the nice. big hubs of it, and sort of still is. What I mean is like. I'd say, let's say we're talking about 2004, 2005, like Hastings was like a massive hub for BMXing at that time and that's only grown, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And now it's so good to see that side of things, like, you know, there's young people, they've got giving lessons, it's Mm -hmm. just becoming more and more and more. It's another one of them things of like seaside town, no money, that's what happens, isn't it? Music and uh, like (laughs) graffiti, skating, BMXing, because it's, it's, uh, it's something that's easily accessible. Um, So when you have towns like ours... All that stuff does flourish, For real? so that's that's the like super. Po- I I like I wouldn't change anything about Hastings and how it's been and everything, you know, because it has created some of the most like amazing, like intense, like creatives that I've ever met. That is, you don't really get that. I didn't realize that that didn't exist everywhere until until we started touring. Until we stuff. started touring, really? and I was like, you you know, I'm not gonna name, I'm not gonna badmouth a town, but you show up in a town A or town B, and you're like. Oh man, this hasn't got the vibe. Like you know, especially when you're in Hastings because you've got Brighton, you've got London, mm. and it's like that little triangle of sort of echo chamber vibes where it feels like everyone's kind of creative, everyone's doing this, everyone's yeah, I doing feel that. that. I feel that. And I, I, so we've been lucky enough to have that. But then, like as you like go further abroad, you're like, oh man, we are lucky to you have. Talk to people about Hastings, and they're like what and you're like is now it's like where you're at and they're like nah, nah. <laughs> we've got like a library and that's it like, that's, you know I mean? yeah like, no that's a good look man mm. oh and when as you were talking stella door gallery which are, yeah. Yeah. yeah big up big up steph and them guys yeah, yeah so, so much good stuff yeah. so much good stuff so many good little galleries and stuff opening up at the moment um it's va- it's fast becoming somewhere that's quite expensive to live which really? is yeah. yeah it's kind it's, of in in tandem with the growth of like loads of great like you know it's hard, and it? cultural things happening like that always comes it's difficult Mm, it's like with the boat on, isn't it? like in the last I mean? 10 years house prices in Hastings have doubled it's one of the most whatever growing, the whatever grow, growing, like it? fastest growing uh, in house prices town in the UK Whoa. so it's, it's mental it's absolutely during Covid like um, everyone realised they didn't need to BNC, they could work man. from home mm. so everyone just was like let's move to Hastings sort of thing and that has happened and it's it's proper it's changed things like the vibe is still there and, and it's great but it, it does worry me like the, how long for because I think the thing is and it's still the case like now and it always has been that, like there's such a strong sense of identity there that like when people move down mm. there's no 
a choice but to just jump yeah. on what's going on because it's rolling it's a train that's moving you know but yeah. you just always wonder like you know you obviously oh, see it you know all over but you know you just hope that you can keep the old uh, the spirit alive and that continues to be the case mad you know isn't it I mean? the musicians isn't it they create this thing and then as soon as this yep. thing gets too cool mm-hmm you get out. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. It's happened <laughs> like, time and it? time again. You look at like Greenwich Village and New York and stuff. Yeah. Like it was cool because it was the musicians were there. They didn't have any money, mm. and it was like that's why they moved there because it was cheap. They create this buzz. Everyone moves in. Kill the buzz. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess the, the new place starts out. again and the cycle continues. Well, that's it. Maybe that's, that's the beautiful. Yeah. It, it the does. It life, does. It, it's yeah. just different when it's your hometown because then you feel like an attachment. You want to be there, but. Of course. Um, Part of me is also like maybe I should just move to Manchester or something. <laughs> yeah, man. because also we we get older in music and you know we want fresh injection of new talent and um, young you know younger audiences and you know but you also want to preserve the the value the core mm-hmm. values of what a scene has created and it's a tough one. Oh man, it? it's the toughest and so, it's so yeah, it's a it's a catch. It's a seesaw and... of trying to. You know, I, I don't even know. People anymore, are usually good as well. You know what I mean? Like we people got, who move down, you meet them. They're they're nice, but mm, everyone just wants you know, mm, like to live in a nice. No one place, minds like, if you move down to live there and to like be part mm, of that town. It's only when you move down to make a quick buck that's when it becomes an issue. Or when you live, or you decide to live above a pub. Mm. And oh, and don't! Oh, I know what mate. you're gonna say. You punk motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah, man. It's man. Like, Fuck it's so it. stupid, isn't it? I, I, why has there not been a rule put in place that's like, if you move into somewhere in within a vicinity of this place, you cannot complain about that. You yeah. know about it. If that place pre-exists your you being there, yeah. you have no right yeah, to yeah, yeah. to like it's move like, live, yeah, yeah, move yeah, down the road. Then you know, yeah. it's who's, in, who's in charge of making the rules? Though, do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's it. Is well, it yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and also, um, my boy Tizer, he said once. Um, you know that uh, the city, the towns, they don't need us. We're we're merely renting it. Yeah, absolutely. And 100%. all of it's set in every sense. Yeah, of yeah. course. Constantly, there's always another. That's it. That's, it. that's and it. That's it. Regeneration. That's it. It's yeah. constantly rolling, isn't it? Hundred percent. Constantly man. rolling. The creative process for you boys. Do you all write? You all write the songs? Yeah, yeah. Beach. It's, it's like a. It's like more we'll than ever on this record. It's like we found like the way that like what we're all really good at doing and it's like it's just works proper streamlined now it's nice man yeah because the lyrics are cold mm. yeah. like well, really so, really at home poetic in fact well me and it will it will normally be a thing of like um i i'd normally stay out of the like music initial music side because like you eddie and george will get in a room sometimes in george's basement toilet in his house in the old town and just play and then i'll come around with ben i'll go to ben's studio and then we'll normally sit down and write lyrics and melody on that sort of thing. Um, it's nice though, because it's I, like there's two different types of doing it. There's sometimes where there'll be sort of like a beat made, and then we'll write to that. But then sometimes it it really opens the door for mm. like then me and you can sit around a guitar and a piano and just have a song yeah. top to bottom. The lyric the lyric nice side of it is definitely comes from like myself and Ben, and then uh, the music side of it is everyone. But I've, as with the second album, I've kind of just been like way more interested in like the lyrics and the and the melody but mostly the lyrics like that's what really has been interesting to me and that's what I really enjoyed doing the most so I've almost like stepped back and been like you guys write some sick beats because you always do and then we come together and then we just fucking it's been pretty cool the way we've been doing that that sort of instrumental side of stuff it's like we kind of been like making our own breaks Mm -hmm. it's like we sort of sit down either with two of us or three of us or whatever and just set up a mic for like two hours and just play and play and play and then whenever there's a cool drum beat that's made by what it is, I'll stop or whoever will stop. And then we'll just let the drums record that as a break. Then we'll carry on. Then we'll look at the whole sausage at the end and be like, all right, cool. <laughs> that's a banging bit of drums. That's a banging bit of drums. Then we'll take that break, build up the drums and then make riffs over the top of that. And mm. it doesn't always happen yeah. that way, but it's a really, really cool way of doing things. And we've mm. been yeah. loving it, man. Like, Yeah, 100%. Mad. Have you ever thought about just releasing them as tunes? Nah, I always want to do stuff you know like saying? that. I'm, I'm always just like, let's just put stuff out. It's like, you've got to be safe. They so... become those like... So back in the day, um, there used to be these DJs called Ing- Invisible Scratch Pickles, which was Cuba, Mixmaster Mike, and like the legends of the... Yeah, but man. they used to do tapes, and it'd just be them scratching the whole time over the top of these beats, and they'd go on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Now, to the untrained, it's just a lot, a lot of the same thing. Yeah, yeah. But to those that are really... You know, passionate about mm-hmm. it. Pick stuff, sample it, do whatever yeah, you want with it. This becomes their like. This almost becomes like their DNA. Mm-hmm. And then later down the line, 
they're heralded as people that pioneered created that just because of that creative process yeah absolutely you guys could kill it just by doing yeah. that <laughs> just, literally just show up yeah just do it put it oh, out there man, yeah, yeah that's it like done. we always like podcast. to be yeah that would be good that would be a good shout we always like to be not mysterious of all that stuff but maybe we, <laughs> maybe we should put more out there just leak it man yeah yeah, yeah 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 totally man like i think in this this day and age people want can you imagine like I don't know, if I was a 13-year-old uh, Kikapichi fan and I would just want to be, like, immersed in Absolutely, what you guys yeah. are doing every day. I want the back patch. I want the fucking... <laughs> I, I, I want your phone number. Yeah. I, want, I want to know where Oh, you man. Are. Funny story about the phone number thing. Oh, we man. didn't even realise this yeah. until... <laughs> literally, we were like... Because um, it's getting to a point now where it's like, you know, you don't necessarily want the whole world having your phone number. And um, <laughs> we, we didn't realise until, like, the other day... Every single email that gets sent, every time you buy a bit of merch, every time at the bottom has Ben Beefham with his phone number at the bottom, Jack Wilson with my phone number at the bottom, <laughs> and we were like, "What the hell is going Yo. on here?" One of our fans was like, "Mate, you need to realise your phone number After is on about... every email that gets sent, every newsletter." <laughs> See, I didn't get the memo on that one. Yeah, because <laughs> no, that's from in the years gone by where we wanted anyone who ever got an email to have our number. Yeah, get in touch. Yeah, yeah. Sort of and thing. then it's like we just forgot to take every bit of merch. Yeah, man. yeah. I only found that out the other day and was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> the world and his wife's got ringing the number, up man. our manager like, it's "Your fault." <laughs> yeah, idiot, that's it, man. Yeah. But no, I'm, I'm uh, <laughs> glad what, what you're saying about the um, lyrics because that is like a huge, huge, huge part for me. Like, and like literally, if you look through my phone, it's just like whoosh, whoosh, of really? just random, random stuff like that. And then we'll come round and you'll play something and be like, "What do you think of this?" We'll listen like two or three beats that you've made. And then I'll just read like a lyric. That's the starting this? point. And, then and it's like, that's the concept, man. Yeah. That's the theme. And it's like, then it goes. It's amazing. Yeah, exactly. Man. Like, oh, I can't even, I'm not allowed to talk about, I can't say any of them because they're all new stuff that we haven't talked about. But yeah, like that's that's my passion. And like the the thing that's like, I just, my favourite thing is walk, when you're walking through the high street or just like in a pub or something is when you like miss here or just hear the end yeah, of a I conversation. Love that shit so much. Yeah. And that's, that's straight away, write that down. And it's like, that for me can start like a whole, a whole, a whole like album or concept or song or whatever, just like hearing the end of a conversation that you were never like part of, and never welcome to hear, and it's just like, what was the beginning of that conversation? Mm. <laughs> you hear that? I love that. There whole definitely, thing. there definitely feels like there's a lot of musing mm. in in and reflection in the lyrics that you, you, it's it, there's a sense of irony as well. Yeah, oh, we we always are like the message is there, and it's one that we truly believe. But one thing we like to do is. Firstly, we don't take ourselves too seriously and we don't want anyone to take us too seriously. And we always say it's got to be tongue in cheek because otherwise there's that fine line between being preachy or mm. being, you know, something that people find enjoyable to listen to. And we don't want to be preachy at all because, you, preachy. Mm. you know, when they say when you point a <laughs> finger, at, <laughs> when you point a finger at someone, you got three pointing back at you. Mm. And it's very true. And whenever we write anything, we always think that, you know, like, we always like, if you're like, say like, you know, song like it right or whatever, any, that's the one example, no, but, but it's it is true. true where you go like some of these lyrics that are scathing, you're like, mate, we've been there. We've would, done that. And do you know what? Yeah. True. true. With, with, you know what with I mean? yeah, yeah. You've got to have experienced it. We've had it with New England where this is the, I would say it's the first time we've had people really getting upset about the lyrics. And we were like, what's different? This is it's the same thing we're always talking about. And what you said is you said, this is the first time that we wrote lyrics that are aimed at the, the man on the street. And these are the things you're doing wrong. And this, you know, is it you can't change or is it you won't change? And mm. all the songs before that were more aimed at like a bigger entity, a government or something mm. like they're doing this, they're doing this. And this was our first song that we put out that is kind of being more like, look at yourself and see what people you People have could, taken that personally. And people take that personally. Know. And I, Why I was like, though? Well, because they are that person, you know, like there's this guy, let's say one example, like kicking off in, you know, a comment section or whatever. And you see it and, you know, you kind of just look at it and you just go, you're demonstrating that the song is is true mm -hmm. do you know what i mean mm -hmm. like you are the character and and that's why you're taking this personally is because like you're the person yeah, people take it personally when, mm -hmm. when they when you see a bit of yourself it hurts doesn't it mm -hmm. when you see something and you hear something and especially when it comes from someone that you like and then you kind of feel like the thing is being pointed at you a little bit it hurts it's like, mm. and that's a good thing. You need that in your life. Challenge. Otherwise, what's the point? Mm. What is the point? You need someone to kind of go... Tough love. Yeah, a little bit of tough love. And But at the same time, like, 
it's all of us. Like it's we're all we're all guilty of being certain things, certain you know things I mean? at certain times. And like you know, it's it's um, we always are like we know that we we are all like that. You know, no one's perfect. But that was interesting to see that with with Mate, those. On I, media, I was happy man. with that. I was like, cool. Yeah, I'm glad that people. This is pissing mm-hmm. people off because people don't really like. Social media has sort of created a world in which people don't really agree with being challenged. Like, you know, mm. whatever those algorithms do, they create echo chambers for you. And mm. it's not really a place you go to be challenged. So if something's coming up, like you're a fan of ours, maybe, and then our music comes up, but it's giving you a message that you're not used don't to seeing because with. it is challenging you. Mm. It's like, that's not, that. it's good to have that out yeah. there. And, and that, that we're definitely not the only people doing that. Music that challenges people, and there's loads of it at the moment, yeah. is so important. It's very easy for, people, yeah, you know? and it's very easy for that to be taken away. From, like you said, the echo chamber is like everyone's pleasant, mm-hmm. but it doesn't pay to be pleasant. It doesn't, no, exactly. doesn't help anyone. Um, also, talking of the same, in the, the same direction, like to have, to have hate creates friction. The friction leads to fire. It, like we always forget about the, the goods when you see one hate. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, yeah. but you kind of need it on balance you yeah. need people you, the haters love you too and they love you so much like you've got to give them a performance yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, totally, yeah I totally agree man. give them a performance yeah you know? absolutely that's what you got to do totally agree mm-hmm. man mm-hmm. so what's the future then boys well it's been a it's been a mad few months it's been really good like um, we're just about to sign our first deal now which is something we've purposely stayed away from mm. If we've always had the ethos of if we can do it, we will do it, mm. and we finally got to the point where we're like, I feel like we've done as much as we possibly can. So now we're kind of like, okay, come to us, sort of thing, and they have, and that's been amazing. And we've we've been, it's been like I would say probably like a year of like weighing up what Chatting, to do, um, taking our time. When you've been in- independent a long time, you know, like you don't want to rush into that thing because. Once you've done every job that you're asking someone else to do, you're quite conscious of whether they're mm. going to do it right or not. Do you know what I mean? Like, Delegation. So kind of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it definitely feels like it, now's the time. And, um, you know, also like financially as a band, it's like everything just is so expensive. Like keep going. Yeah, I, got, I might just add, they went to come down like the other week, but you, you, your account got hacked. Yes, like, yeah, exactly. Like, that's the tribulations of a band. I mean? Luckily we'll, it was sorted now, but that was it. All, all was the passwords, <laughs> literally. We, we were on our way up. We were on the, I had the coffees from and everything. Oh, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. It was your account. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it was. What all yeah, the coffees. <laughs> Yeah, all the shops on this high street. That's what it was. I knew I recognised that. Yeah, man. Yeah, that was horrible. But do you know what I mean? That's that's the things that goes on. But so so that's going to be a massive change for us. We'll be what working. Label? With them. Do we have a label? Do we know. Uh, Got to keep it on the old hush. It's, it's one of the it's one of the big boys. Yeah. but it's going to be good. Get the fucking congratulations. Yeah, we yeah love man. This. Begins we begins with an S. Up, thank you, thank you. Um, but yeah, it will be it will probably it will be out there soon enough. I'm sure. But um, I'll probably get in trouble if I said at the moment. Yeah. Um, but we've got. Like our headline tour coming up in September, October. Oh, tight. We're, yeah, going to do our biggest shows there. We'll be doing a uh, London Forum, Kentish Town Forum, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Do we have to come down here with a camera? Do we have to? Mm, yeah, 100%. Yeah, please, you're, it, you're all more than welcome, yeah, man. You'll be backstage with the party. And uh, <laughs> and then we got, I think we're doing some European tours with some good bands. We're, uh, if this may have already happened by the time it comes out, but we're doing um, Royal Albert Hall with Liam Gallagher. Woo! Yeah, so it's going to be a, a pretty mad year. You better get your Gallagher swagger ready. I know, you man. I've got my, Parker, my yeah, Parkins yeah. in the wash. I think like this year, like I think we kind of said, because someone asked us the other day, they were mm. like, what's your objective for this year then? And it was like first time. We I hate that. that. We were like, that shit. And then we kind of thought about it and we were like, do you know what, man? It's live. Yeah. It's like we've had two years off live and we've, Counted up dominoes in all other places. It's like let's make this year about live yeah. and getting mm. tickets and bods in the door. You Balance know what I mean? it up, like hundred yeah. percent, man. That's you know it. What I mean? And we merch ready. Yeah, absolutely, man. <laughs> yeah, and, man. and the second album will be out this year. And it's like, I was, you know, everyone always says, "Oh, it's the best thing we've ever done." But I was happy with the first album. But I love this second album. It's something that, like, if I ever have kids or grandkids, which probably won't, that's what I would show them and be like, if I can show them one thing that I'm super proud of, like, it just. Everything that people like about us, it's that times a million. So I'm, I'm excited for that. Yeah, I'm that excited is so for it sweet. Yeah. It's I cool with, with the first album as well, because it's like that classic thing. It's like it's your whole life up to that point. So it definitely feels like a snapshot of your past and like a bit of your present. But 
this thing just feels like a snapshot of right now, of the present in it. We wrote it and made it fairly quickly within a year. Yeah, as soon as possible. And it's it. like present, yeah. you know, and, and we're really proud of it. It's like a it. South Park episode. You want to get it out quick. Yo, so did you see relevant. that documentary? That one yeah, one? yeah, love it. Do you know what I mean? So that's yeah. what we wanted to do as quickly as possible with this album. Minus like, the burgers and the, the, you know, you, the, the last you, endorphin you know, hits. When you're, when you're doing that sort of music, it, the whole, what makes it cool is that it's relevant. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So it's like, right, we've got to get press this out. Kind of thing, yeah. yeah, exactly. So that's why we put that party at number 10 out because um, we were just like, got to get it out now because in, in like six, seven months from now... People it's, will it's, be like, what? what? <laughs> Every the 24-hour news cycle, they're going to be like, what, what was that? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah they oh, had yeah. a party. Especially with the, the likes of Liam Gallagher sporting it because, you know, he's he's kind of one of the last kind of bastions mm. of, like, public speakers. Yes. And, yeah, I mean, John Lydon's gone down a pan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah big time. Yeah, yeah, Respectfully. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love the guy, but I know for what you sure, mean. For sure, for sure. But mean, no, you're right. Yeah, like the last bastion of... That's why I meant a, that, that meant a lot to us because I was like when I grew up when I was sixteen I saw Oasis at Wembley Stadium a week before they split up my mate had tickets don't know how and um, we went and watched that and it was just like you know seeing like one of them last proper like moments man. rock bands where you're like oh that's that will probably never exist again like mm. that you know so mm. for him to know who we are was like I couldn't believe that and uh, and yeah also he just he, he's kind of like the last person that can kind of get away with just doing what he wants mm. and saying what he wants. And people hate him for that, but I just like love him for it. I think it's so cool that he, mm. he just don't care. Yeah, and that, that's always a good recipe for rock and roll. Absolutely, yeah, I love the guy. Gentlemen, it's been a fucking pleasure. Thank, yeah, you, so thank you for having us, man. Thank you, man. <laughs> yeah, it well, we got there in the end. Yeah, yeah, very yeah nice. safe, everything's safe. <laughs> Bands on up and rising, man. Come on, it's that punk sensation running across the nation. We ain't keeping it uh, under lock and key. We're sending it out there, Killer Keller Podcast. Big shout out to everybody uh, from hip hop to drum and bass to, to fucking grime to uh, to punk. We cover it all. Sport and art, street culture. This is it. Killer Keller Podcast. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Stay lucky, people. Peace. <laughs> Sick, man.